Joined now by Tyler Hork of, of blueandgold.com. Big game in South Bend. The Buckeyes are coming to town. I don't know. You might have heard this, Tyler, that uh, Marcus Freeman played football at Ohio State. Yeah. You know what? Here's a funny thing about that. Last year, when this was the season opener and it was his first season opener, of course, he coached in that Fiesta Bowl uh, the year before because he was kind of left high and dry and everyone was by Brian Kelly. But that's another conversation. Uh, that's all anybody wanted to talk about, like all off season, all summer. And then Monday press conference of that game. It was, hey, uh, Jim Trestle this and, and Marcus Freeman, you played for Ohio State that today. He got nothing. The Monday press conference. Yeah. Nobody asked him, hey, Marcus Freeman, uh, what about your time at Ohio State? So it's kind of refreshing that we, at least as a Notre Dame beat media, we've kind of moved on from that. Well, also, that was his first season opener, first game as yeah. the official head coach. But also, people weren't thinking Notre Dame had a chance in that game. Yeah. Very different feeling now with this particular Notre Dame team where – the vibe to me sounds like it's more of a pick them than, oh, they're just going to go and Ohio State's going to warm up with them. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of slightly surprised that, and I haven't looked too much, but what it was it three and a half when the line came out Sunday, yes. two and a half? Right. So that kind of means that odds makers think that Ohio State would be around a touchdown favorite on a neutral field. On a neutral and field, yeah. I don't see it that way. I, I, it does feel like a pick them. Maybe we are too much into this. Sam Hartman frenzy and maybe Marcus Freeman has figured it out. Audra Gestime might be one of the best running backs in America. Like maybe we're leaning too hard into that. I'm not sure. We're going to find out Saturday for sure. But just based on what I've seen from Notre Dame and conversely, what I've seen from Ohio State as well, I think, yeah, you, you couldn't be more right about that, Andy, when you say it feels like Notre Dame can actually win this game when, when last year it could not. Uh, Marcus Freeman, I will mention another thing that he said in the post or the press conference on Monday, and I actually asked him this question last year. It was he preemptively said, "Hey, we're going to try to control the ball, take possessions away from Ohio State because we don't think we can win like a mono e mono football game." Now it's, "Hey, give us the ball! Like we we think we can score. We have one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Let's play football, right?" And then that just there right there tells you the difference between 2022 and 2023. Well, what's so interesting, and I was talking to Tim May from Letterman Row about this is that this version of Notre Dame's offense is probably the closest thing they're going to see to Michigan before they actually play Michigan yeah. because a big physical offensive line wants to yeah. mash you up front, and then they want to use the run game to set up an explosive pass game. That, that sounds pretty similar, and Ohio State has struggled with that each of the past two years. Yeah, and I think some of that is a bugaboo of like once you lose to Michigan like they did two years ago, like, oh, no, it, it can happen again. I don't think they're Ohio State's going to walk into Notre Dame Stadium, even with these green jerseys. Uh, I don't know if you saw my Twitter or X account, whatever you want to call it. Notre Dame's giving out wristbands and everyone's going to be wearing green wristbands. They're going to be flashing all crazy and whatnot. I don't think that's going to affect no. Ohio State very much. You know, Ryan Day, Ryan Day's 48 and six or whatever it is. Like he knows how to win football games. Two of those have come to Michigan. So yeah, there's where a little bit of that uncertainty comes in for o Ohio State. It's like, Okay, if this team really is Michigan uh, 2.0 light, however you want to see it, in Ann Arbor, they probably see it as light. And, and here in South Bend, they say, hey, we're Michigan 2.0 or 3.0, whatever it is. Um, yeah, you're right about that too, Andy. It's Notre Dame wants to run the football first. It has Audric Estime, who is second in yards per game in all of college football, which is kind of crazy on a team that has Sam Hartman and, and can throw it so well as well. So, yeah, that's what it is. It's a team that can run to set up the pass, but it can also pass to set up the run. It's, it's a multi-functional offense for Notre Dame right there. And that, that's just not, that's not scary just for Ohio state. Like that scares anybody right now, the way Notre yeah. Dame's moving the ball. We'll be right back with more from Tyler Horka. But first I want to tell you about game time. Do you want to go to this Notre Dame, Ohio state game that we're talking about in South Bend? Do you want to be in the shadow of touchdown Jesus this weekend? I know what you're thinking. Andy, that, being, that game's been sold out for months, if not years. How am I supposed to get tickets? Game time is how you get tickets. They have tickets all over the stadium. All you do is you hop in that game time app. You download it from gametime.co. You enter Notre Dame football. You click on Notre Dame football. You click on the Ohio State game. And there they are. 
all these tickets that could be yours. Now, you got to pay for them. It's, it's a big game. But you can get in as cheap as 439 bucks. There's a section six of the lower section, row 57 for 579. You want to know how I know it's an awesome view? Because I click on it in the game time app and it shows me the view from that seat. It's amazing. And then at that point, only two clicks away from having that ticket in my phone. And if I wanted to send a ticket to a friend on game day, I could do that from the app too. It's very easy. Game time makes it all easy, takes all the stress out of last minute ticket buying. You want to make it less stressful, you get $20 off if you use the code roundtable with your first purchase. That's roundtable, R-O-U-N-D-T-A-B-L-E for 20 bucks off your first purchase. You want to go to this game? Download the game time app. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Speaking of scary, let's talk about Ohio State's receivers. Marvin yeah. Harrison Jr. will be the most special player on the field. As much as Notre Dame people love all their players, I think <laughs> they can all admit that. And then Emeka Buka is, is really good. Like He would be yeah. re wide receiver number one pretty much every other team in the country. How, did, Notre, how Dame, does yes. Notre Dame cover, <laughs> cover those guys? Uh, last year, they couldn't cover Emeka Buka, if you remember. I think they were uh, chips in, all, all in on covering Marvin Harrison Jr., especially after Jackson Smith and Jigba got mm -hmm. hurt on like the first series of that yeah. game, I want to say. Took a nasty hit from Brandon Joseph. Uh, so, so from there, it was easier for Notre Dame to say, hey, no more Jackson Smith. We're going to cover Marvin Harrison. And they did pretty well, but that leaves Emeka Abuka, and he's the guy that ultimately – torched them enough to win that ball game last year. So they know what they're up against. Notre Dame is, uh, and this is the number one pass efficiency defense in the country. Notre Dame's is that helps w when you're playing Navy, Navy who doesn't <laughs> Navy who doesn't pass the ball at all. Tennessee state is an FCS team. You intercept Brennan Armstrong three times. The, the efficiency goes up with that as well. And then last week, central Michigan had a backup quarterback playing against Notre Dame. So that was no match for those guys either. This is a different test, Marvin Harrison and Emeka Abuka. And, and it looked like Kyle McCord finally started figuring some things out against Western Kentucky. So uh, there's no doubt about it. Notre Dame knows what it's up against. And uh, this could be one of those matchups, the, the Ohio State wide receivers versus the Notre Dame secondary that could ultimately decide the game. Is this one where Notre Dame tries to get pressure on Kyle McCord affected that way or let those guys try to cover and hope that they can then get to Kyle McCord because he's waiting. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a tricky situation because Notre Dame is very much a pressure team and its defensive line across the board isn't getting enough pressure on its own right now anyway. So you're going to see some blitzes with five or six guys going at Kyle McCord. At that point, though, you're, you're trusting man coverage on the back end. We've even seen some zone coverage in Notre Dame's dime scheme. I think that's playing with way too much fire uh, against uh, Emeka Buka and Marvin Harrison. So you're probably not going to see that as much. And maybe you do see less uh, blitzes from Al Golden's unit just because it, if, if you blitz, for example, and you don't get to Kyle McCord and he's got time, it, it's 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 a nightmare game over situation for Notre Dame. So maybe it's something where they try it early and say, hey, this is going to work tonight. And if it doesn't work early, you're, you're going to say, hey, we've got to adjust and just try to cover these guys straight up. Thinking back to watching last year's game, like trying to imagine what what it would be like with these two teams with potential offensive fireworks with you know big plays over the top both directions yeah. it's kind of strange but i kind of can't wait yeah no it was like it's finally here in that way and i think last year's matchup it was awesome because it was a season opener and you're like all right yeah Notre Dame Ohio State at the horseshoe this thing's going to be rocking and then you got into it and Notre Dame was leading like 10 to 7 late in the third quarter i want to say and you're everyone was sitting there thinking and this isn't exactly what we wanted this year. It can be totally different. I think the potential for offensive firepower is there. Uh, both teams can run the ball really well too. Yeah. So you're going to see some like ground and pound Travion Henderson, Audrick Estime, Mayon Williams, like, like all these guys going head to head respectively, obviously, obviously those guys aren't going head to head, but they're going to be doing their things. And then all of a sudden you might get a pass over the top. Like Sam Hartman hits a 30 yard touchdown. Kyle McCord hits a 40 yard touchdown. So the potential for the game that we all wanted last year uh, is definitely here this year. Cannot wait. I will see you in South Bend, Tyler. Absolutely.